As we wrap up our study of separable differential equations, I want to pause for a minute and show you why this process actually works. I mentioned at the very beginning that when we do separation, there's a little bit of hand waving where we say let's multiply both sides by dx to get all the x's on the right side as we have all the y's on the left side. But I mentioned that, that differentials like dy and dx are not actually algebraic things that we can manipulate in the same way, even though we do sometimes just as a notational measure. But I want to show you very specifically in a little bit more technical way why this actually works. Even if in the course of doing problems we just think of it as multiplying both sides by dx, to be a little bit more careful, a little bit more precise, I'm going to show you uh, the background of why this works. And it's relatively simple, you just have to remember the chain rule from Calc 1. So the key to this is that if we rewrite the differential equation in this form, where we've already moved all the y's to the left side, we have something in terms of y times dy dx equals f of x, we're not actually allowed to multiply dx on both sides, even though we tend to, just to show the problem being worked out. But the key is assume that both of these functions have antiderivatives. In other words, assume that they are integrable functions. For our purposes, they will be, and this means that separation really only works when these functions can be integrated. Of course, we know that because in the course of doing the problems, we need to integrate. So we assume they have antiderivatives. So let's assume that the antiderivative of h is capital H and the antiderivative of f is capital F. So that means that capital H prime equals little h and capital F of x prime equals little f of x. So notationally we're just assuming they have antiderivatives and we're labeling them as capital H and capital F. So then, that means that capital H prime can replace little h, and capital F prime can replace little f. Notice what we have here. This right here is actually the chain rule in action. The chain rule says that if you want to take the derivative of a function of y of x, you take the derivative of the outer function h, so you have h prime, and then you take the derivative of the inner function, so you have dy dx. So it's really just the chain rule. That means that this left side is just the derivative of h prime, and of course the right side is just the derivative of capital F. So that means that these two functions, h and y, have the same derivative. If you think about it, if two functions have the same derivative, the only difference between them is a constant. So that means that h of y equals f of x plus c. And that's exactly what we do in the process. We integrate the function of y, we integrate the function of x, and then we have plus c on the right side. So if you need to, you might want to look through that again just to make sense of it. This isn't something I'm going to test you on, but I think it's good for you to see that we aren't just hand-waving away the difficult parts. We use the fact that we can rewrite a separable equation by moving the dx to the other side, but you should understand that that's not, strictly speaking, a valid mathematical tool. This is actually the way it really works. The other way is just a notational thing we use to keep track of what happens, to remind us to integrate the function of y with respect to y and the function of x with respect to x. But this is really the background for why separation works.